Good evening. It's Angela Walker with Grumpy. And this week I am doing the reading for Hypnotic Behavior, A Cognitive Social Psychological Perspective by Nicholas Spanos. This study covers the areas of cognitive, social, psychological, and behavioral psychology. And we're going to say goodbye to Grumpy now. Bye, Grumpy. Anyway, so Spanis did not focus on one specific study, but rather many different studies. Spanos did not want to prove that hypnosis does not exist, but rather to demonstrate that hypnotic behaviors are a result of highly motivated, goal-directed social behaviors, not an intended, not an altered and unique state of consciousness, which knowing he wasn't trying to predict or prove that, hype, that hypnosis doesn't exist makes this article unique in itself. Spanos noted that most people see hypnosis as a mysterious and powerful process, of controlling the mind. The phrases such as going under and trance indicate that it's considered a separate and unique state of awareness differing from both waking and sleeping. Spano stated that hypnosis is nothing more than an increased degree of motivation to perform certain behaviors and can be explained without invoking notions of trances or alternate altered states. Hypnotism is a trance-like state in which the suggestibility of the subject increases immensely. Relaxation and imagination are also heightened, making the condition seem almost like sleep, although we are fully awake and conscious. Ernest Hilgard, who was a researcher, supported the position that hypnosis is an altered physical state psychological state, which includes increased susceptibility to suggestion, involuntary performance of behaviors, improvements in recall, increased intensity of visual imagination, dissociation, and analgesia. In contrast, Spano stated that, that hypnotized participants are actually engaging in voluntary behavior designed to produce a desired consequence and it does not involve an altered state of consciousness. Spanos describes that the only reason people define themselves as having been hypnotized is that they have interpreted their own behavior under hypnosis in ways that are consistent with their expectation about being hypnotized. Most of Spanos findings that are reported were taken from 16 studies that Spanos was directly involved in. As participants are being hypnotized, they are usually asked to take various tests to determine if a hypnotic state has been induced. Spanos claimed these tests are carried out to invite the participants to convince themselves that something out of the ordinary is happening. Such as participants being told, your arm is heavy and you can't hold it up. These suggestions contain two interrelated requests. One request asks the participant to do something and the other asks them to interpret the action that is occurring involuntarily. One of the, one of three things will result. Uh, the participant will fail to respond to the, to the suggestion. Spanos states that uh, these participants don't understand that they must voluntarily do something, the suggested behavior, and instead they wait for their arms or body to move. Other participants respond to the suggestion but are aware they are behaving voluntarily. Lastly, participants agree with both requests. They respond to the suggestion and interpret their responses as beyond their control. The one study that was published used hesitant participants that agreed to hypnosis. And once they agreed to hypnosis, they were assigned one of three groups. The first group was given no information about what to expect from the hypnotic experience. The second group was given cognitive behavioral information about the hypnotic experience. The third group was told what a hypnotic trance was like, along with information about cognitive dissociation. The results showed that cognitive behavioral in the trance group demonstrated the greatest hypnotic suggestibility. 
The pros is it can be used in cognitive behavioral therapy, but is subject to the participant's uh, conscious attitude and voluntary efforts. Hypnosis is a skill where the subject actively does something rather than waiting for something to happen. Uh, other pros is when under hypnosis, the participant will not engage in acts that they believe are antisocial and it is person centered. Um, and it is also a natural, uh, healing remedy. The cons, not everybody can be hypnotized. Um, the power of suggestion, uh, can also lead people to buy things through repetition after seeing commercials, uh, you know, repetitive commercials. This gives the power of suggestion. Um, you know, our subconscious uh, will start to take, take note of that information, kind of store it. And when you actually see the product, you're like, oh, I keep seeing this product on TV. So you end up buying it. Um, let's see. Oh, another con. I would so be into hypnosis for this. Under hypnosis, individuals can't perform feats with superhuman strength or endurance. That alone, if, 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 if we could do that, I would so work on trying to get hypnotized. Uh, totally. Um, another con is hypnotism can lead to pseudo memories causing false reports or possible wrongful arrests. Um, that has been researched quite, uh, extensively actually, um, through the extra, uh, research I did, um, after reading this study. Um, the two extra studies that I found, um, in 2016, Dr. David Spiegel published his first research on the impact of human brains. The researchers found distinct changes in brain activity among hypnotized patients using uh, frequency MRIs and ECGs. He found hypnosis can help with insomnia and sleepwalking. And he also shared how hypnosis can ease anxiety by encouraging the body to use its natural relaxation response triggered by a phrase or a nonverbal cue. So these individuals are trained to think of this word, whatever word they come up with. Um, and when they start to feel anxious, they say this word and it triggers them to become more relaxed, lowered heart rate, lowered blood pressure, less anxiety. Um, and then in 2017, a study was completed on hypnosis and depression. Unfortunately, due to a poor diagnosed study and the high risk of bias, the effectiveness was unclear. Um, that's one thing I'm going to make a mention of is a lot of the research that I was reading about hypnosis and the power of suggestion and the brains um, with the imaging and the, EEC and the ECGs um, that a lot of it was all, all over the place. There, there was nothing that was concrete. Uh, one never proved anything more so than another. Um, some failed proving what they were trying to prove. Um, others were very biased. So uh, this is a very, uh, highly controversial topic, actually. <laughs> um, in, in regards to hypnosis. Um, but again, in, in reference to the mind, you know, it, it, like I said earlier with, uh, the definition of, of hypno hypnotism, it, it's a state of mind, even though Spano says it's not a state of mind of being relaxation and the imagination and you're, it's like you're asleep, but you're fully awake and conscious. And that's what Spanos was trying to show was that hypnosis is based upon the motivation of what your goals are. So if I, as far as the value for this study, on how it affects me. Unfortunately, I cannot be hypnotized. I have tried numerous times. I've even gone to trained hypnotists um, for weight loss, for smoking, <laughs> and depression as well. Um, 
So, and it did not work for me as well. Um, so, I mean, and we've also, I'm sure growing up, we always had the hypnotist, you know, up on stage with the parties and, you know, school assemblies way back in the day. I'm sorry, I'm old. Um, <laughs> you know, I always remember, I was always one that was let go. I'm like, man, I wanted to stay on stage and laugh, have everybody laugh at me like everybody else. But that person has to be open. Their mind has to be open to accept the power, the, the suggestion. And again, they're given two acts, you know, one that they have to accept what is being asked of them and then they have to act on it. So as Spanos is, says, you know, this is, this is a voluntarily goal-driven act. Um, and again, as far as how does this uh, study have value on me, it really kind of, other than, you know, trying to relate the subconscious mind and how the mind works, um, it does bring in another aspect of, uh, of consciousness. Um, and I'm going to leave you with that suggestion is everywhere. Well, while waiting at a doctor's office, you sit down because everyone else is in the doctor's office is sitting down as well. And through past experience and previous learning, you sit down too. So this goes into, you know, previous experience and what we've learned growing up, you know. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this presentation. Um, this one was a little bit more difficult as a uh, I had no real studies to compare to or reflect off of. Um, I hope everybody has a great safe week. Uh, I look forward to seeing everybody else's uh, oral presentations. And we will say goodbye to Grumpy. <laughs> Have a good night. Bye.